Welcome to part two of our stirrup pump tutorial. In part one, we learn how to restrict the motion of the pump using the clamp node. The next stage for us is to find out when the pump is moving in a downward direction. And to do this, we have to ask a simple question. The first thing we need to do is output the Y position of the pump object. And we do that as per usual. The next thing we need to do is output the previous position of the pump object. And we come down in the menu here and select that there. To ask our question, we simply compare the two values. In order to do this, we're going to bring in a new node called a compare node. So we come down to our nodes, Expresso, logic this time, and compare. As you will notice, the compare node has two input values on the left hand side. If we move over to our node properties, we can see how this actually works. It does its job by asking one of a number of different questions. There are six in total. We can find out if numbers are equal to each other, one is less than the other, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, or if the numbers are not equal to each other. The option we need to go for is less than, because we need to find out if position Y is less than the previous position. So we'll just plug those two in there. Just get that one done there. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in a result node. And we go to our menu, new node, Expresso General this time, and result. And we can use this node to get the value of the output from the compare node. And we'll just plug that in there. Now, we're looking for a number one when the pump is moving in a downward direction in the result node, and a zero when it's moving in the upward direction. So we'll just move it down and we're getting our number one. Let's see what happens. No, we're still getting a number one in the upward direction. Well, that must mean that there's something not quite right here. Well, let's see if we can work out what it is. I'll just copy this result node over here and just bring it down there. And then I'll plug in the previous position and we'll see what we're getting in there now. Let's see what that tells us. OK, so we're getting a value of 281.738 in there as the previous position. Let's just take this result node over here and plug in the position Y and see what we get in there. We'll just move the pump a little. And now we get 200 because it's at its maximum position. And yet the previous position is actually higher. So there's certainly something wrong then. What it actually is is really quite simple, but it does need some explanation. Position Y is purely one value. Just literally the height. We're only interested in the height. We're ignoring the X. We're ignoring the Z axes. So we're getting the height from zero, which is exactly what we want. However, the previous position is actually outputting something different. It's the length of a vector that we're getting here. And I'm just going to illustrate this. I've got a measure and construction set up. So if I just sort this out, come down to measure and construct here and hit show. So there's our vector. And if you look at what it measures, it's 281.738, which is exactly, oops, <laughs> exactly the same as we've got down here. And the vector is coming from the center of the world. And you can see here that we've got the, the world axes in there. If I just move this out of the way, we've got the X here on the red line there. We've got the Y here labeled up there on the green and the blue is the Z. So this point here is the center of the world. And you might say, in fact, you can say, that the actual object here, the, the pump object, has traveled this distance from the center of the world. We're not just purely getting the height. So if we can explain this a bit more, what we'll do, we'll just turn the axes on over here. So if we look at this collection of axes, the object's local axes, it's literally the distance that they have traveled relative to the center of the world that's being returned as a, as a vector value there. So hopefully that explains that. So what we now need to do is get the value of just the y-axis as opposed to all three axes. Unfortunately, help is at hand and we can actually do that. So if we come down here, just unplug that one and we'll unplug that for a moment as well. What we need is an adapter node. So if we come to new node Expresso and we come to adapter this time and then go across down to a vector to reals, that's the node that we actually need. And there it is. The vector to reals node has one input and on the right hand side, three outputs representing the X, Y and Z axes. So now if we take our previous position and plug it into the vector to reals and then take the position y here and plug that into the result, we now get 200. And that means we're definitely looking at the height just from zero from the red line here as opposed to using the vector value, which is excellent. That sorted that out for us. So with that problem solved, our next step 
is to take the position y from the vector to reals and plug it into the compare node. And now we literally are comparing the position y up here to the previous position y. That's great, so let's just see if this works. We'll bring the result node up here, plug the output of the compare in there. And now we're going to move the pump down. We get a number one, yes we do. And if we move it up, we get a zero. So we have solved that problem. So that's how you sort that one out. Well, that completes part two of this tutorial. So hopefully you found it enjoyable and you've learned a little bit more. I'll see you soon in part three.